Pressurized water reactors, or PWRs, are the most common type of reactor in the United States, making up approximately 65% of the fleet. Pressurized water reactors have three coolant loops rather than two in boiling water reactors. Here we see a schematic diagram of a pressurized water reactor. The reactor pressure vessel is kept under pressure, and so the coolant in the first primary loop is always in a liquid phase. This is connected to a secondary loop that has the steam generator and boils water to turn a turbine, which generates electricity. This, in turn, is connected to a tertiary loop, which uh, cools the secondary loop with, with the environment. Specifically, note that PWRs do not boil water in their core. The primary loop is kept pressurized and creates superheated water. It is the secondary loop that then creates the steam and which then turns the turbine to generate electricity. PWRs have fuel assemblies that are made up of more, thinner rods than their BWR counterparts. Both 17x17 17 17 and 19x19 19 19 designs are common. Here we see an example pressurized water fuel assembly with control rod positions noted in the figure. In a pressurized water reactor, reactivity is controlled via burnable poisons, also known as a chemical shim in this context, regulating control rods, which adjust the multiplication factor during operation, and safety control rods, which are used during shutdowns, scrams, or other emergencies. For the chemical shim, the reaction of interest is Boron-10 absorbing a neutron, which will then create lithium-7 and an alpha particle. Boron-10 has an N-alpha cross-section that's approximately 5 times 10 to the 4 barns. Thus, even at a parts per million concentrations, boron-10 will affect the reactivity of the core. To model boron-10 concentrations as a function of time, we'll use the transmutation equations such that the change in the number density per time is equal to the minus the sigma alpha cross-section times the flux times the concentration of boron, n sub b. Given a constant flux, the burn-up is equal to the energy release per fission times the microscopic fission cross-section times the fluence divided by the mass. This in turn is in a constant flux scenario equal to E sub F sigma F times the flux times the time divided by the mass. Solving for the flux, we can then say that the flux is equal to the mass times the burn up divided by the energy release per fission times the fission cross section times the time. Sticking this back into the differential equation, we see that D and B DT equals minus sigma alpha times nb times the mass times the burnup divided by ef sigma ft. Grouping nb and t terms, we see dnb over nb equals negative sigma alpha m times the burnup divided by ef sigma f times dt over t. Integrating this expression from time t0 to time t1, yields the natural log of nb of t1 divided by nb of t0 equal to minus sigma alpha times the mass times the burnup divided by the energy release per fission times the fission cross-section times the natural log of t1 over t0. Exponentiating both sides, we see that nb of t1 divided by nb of t0 equals t1 over t0 to the power of minus sigma alpha times the mass times the burnup divided by ef sigma f. The concentration of boron at time t sub 1 is equal to the concentration of boron at time t sub 0 multiplied by the exponentiation t sub 1 divided by t sub 0 to the power of minus sigma alpha mbu divided by ef sigma f.